Oh, hello. Good hello, good morning. Shin splints. Welcome to Cars and Bells. My name's Lauren. Good to see you. Sorry, I'm yeah, no, are, this is good. Distract, I like that people distract. are using the chat. I like yeah. that people are using the chat. So we just have a request for some uh, shin splints and four hours of sleep, but we're all here. So thank you very much for being here. Uh, we will get into some of our fun, uh, silly walks, funny walks. That'll help. Uh, might feel really good and just Tuesday give, morning, give your ankles uh, some ranges. It might feel like it's too much. So at, with anything that we do here, uh, do a little bit, see how it feels. If it does feel good, by all means, add some volume or repetitions to that. Speaking of volume. Volume. We got our missing link. Or, or do we? Or do we? We really hope. I wish today Boom. maybe we didn't have it. Ooh, might have clipped it. Yeah, you clipped it. Clipped. New terminology. You we have take them through breathing. We'll take us through breath. The breath. Okay. That helps my hiccups. The other day we did the side lying breath. Nice. Great. The other day we did that side lying breath. You're we overhead, kind of laid on our side. Different way to feel that. By all means, integrate that if we uh, feel you want, or just your general belly breaths here. Lauren's introduced us to a drill called our box breathing. Think five seconds of an inhale five seconds of a hold, five seconds of an exhale, and five seconds of a hold. Play with those numbers on your own time, but let's start a five second inhale through the nose right about now. Breathe in, feel in the belly, hold for five, exhale, four, three, two, and one. Hold. Big sniff in. Where's that air going in the belly for four, three, two, one, and hold for five. And that exhale through the nose. I know that was a mouth sound there. I'm gonna hold empty for five. I can hear Lauren's stomach. The breath in, the hold for five. I shake, feel that energy, feel that breath here. Exhale, let's hold empty five. And one more breath in. And just relax. Might've been a little distracted with Lauren's booing, hiccuping and sounds, but breathing, think about that, work on that as we go. Easy on those shin splints, as mentioned earlier. Say hello. Those tib anteriors, they might say, this is great for them, or holy, let's hold off. We're going to walk. Take your time to come up. And we'll get walking around a little bit here. I we'll was out for a run the other day, and somebody had put on their boulevard the Ministry of Silly Walks. So in the middle of my run, I started flailing about. So that's what we're going to do. Let's start with a gentle awakening of the toes. Our heel strike, our roll through the foot, articulating the toes, trying to play the piano one toe at a time, and then remember that back toe bends. Maybe just for the first time you push through those toes, maybe not coming over on the first time, heel striking, piano playing, big toe last, bending that other foot just to warm it up, push, See how I use my toe to push through. This time we'll add to that back foot. I'm still playing the piano through my front foot. We'll add that bend, roll over, roll back, and push through. One more time with that. I find it hard to do without looking at my feet. We want to look at what's going on. What's going on down there? And that's definitely important. But try to do it that you could look ahead and you can feel or visualize what's really happening at the foot ankle there. Last one. And that roll over there that we're doing at the end, that might be that beautiful yeah. feel or not quite Just as nice. Not quite as nice. The opposite of the top of your head. Head neck, speaking of that. Head necks. We'll start by doing our gentle flexion and extension, meaning yes and no. Very slow. Wait, wait, yes. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeses. So we'll do our yeses here first. And down. And just do that one more time, up and down very casually. And return to that tall center position. Add the rotation or the no. Again, pull the crown. Our little buns here, our top knots are being pulled to the ceiling. And then return to center. And then the I don't know or smash an ear on a spike on your shoulder if you're Lauren. Ugh. Maybe one more of each. Return to center. Loosen it up. Sticking with the feet, toe heels, toe point. Pull the toes to the floor. The ball of the foot is now on the ground. Pull that heel down. And can we push to both feet? Hold the single leg balance if allowed. And again, same thing, toe Pull yourself down, both heels to the floor, and then transition back up onto that front leg. Repeat for a couple more. Pulling that ankle down, getting that calf on the back turned on to help stabilize at the knee and the ankle. Last one or two. And then up. So working on that balance and the control through those feet. Take your time when you do those. Yes. Blades and shoulders. Shoulder blades. Let's first just get our blades moving and then we'll get into our shoulders. Arms extended out in front of you, standing, seated. We're going to go right into our circles. So from here, I'm gonna push my arms away from me and my blades are gonna go on either side of my body. Then my blades are gonna slide up into my ears. My elbows remain straight. My blades pull back together, and then they pull down. They push forward, reaching away. They come up into my ears, my elbows don't bend. They pull back, they slide down. Pause in that bottom position. Keep pulling down, feel those lats. They're right here, mm -hmm. lats, laps for everyone. Three, two, now reverse it. Go back together, slide your blades up. Protract your blades, or reach your arms forward. Pull your blades down. That's a hard one. Retract them back together. One more time. Slide up. Slide forward. Slide down. And retract and hold. Last three, two, one. And ease out of that. Great. Into our shoulders here. From here, we'll do our full car or, sh or our shoulder rotation, but let's explore it first. I'm adopting that stagger stance because it helps me not rotate as much. If I stand here, I'm more likely to rotate. So staggering a foot, keeping an arm at your side, elevate your shoulder, retract it, and pull it down. With your elbow straight, slowly just explore your overhead to start today. Coming to your overhead, once you get there, just pause. Pausing in your overhead position, check in. Could you straighten your elbow more? Could you pull your ribs and hips together so that you're not arching your low back? Are you square forward? Three, two, now using those lats we just warmed up, pull that arm back to your side. At your side, rotate your hand or your arm, really, so that your pinky starts facing forward and your thumb leads back. Retract your blade. Pull it down, reach towards the back now into our extension here. Elbow stays straight. My thumb is still leading back. I haven't done any rotation. Pull my blade back again, keep reaching. Three, elbow straight, two, one. Pull that back down to your side. If either of those, unrotate your hand. If either of those didn't feel good, do this really small in an area that does feel good. We're gonna link those two. Thumb starts facing forward, so back to the first position. Shoulder blade goes up, back and down. Elbow remains straight, ribs to hips, straight arm up to your overhead. Once you get there, pause. To go any further, you're gonna have to start rotating in the joint. Start your rotation so that your palm starts to turn down, your elbow stays straight. 
Mm -hmm. and you rotate in its socket. So you end up in that position where our pinky leads to the front and our thumb is pointed to the back of the root. Retract, or sorry, elevate shoulder blade, retract, depress, thumb leads backwards, elbow remains straight. It's gonna hit a point in which it can't go any further. That's where you have to start that rotation, keeping that shoulder low, coming up to your overhead, squaring up forward, elbow remains straight. Now, pull through concrete, push that arm down, push, 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 back together. Shake it out. And again, are we in that same stance? I know I caught myself fighting that rotation and Lauren called me out on that elbow. Elbow. Keep that elbow straight, Ian. Right. And you too. Explore the front again. Stagger stance. Arm straight. Lift blade. Retract blade. Pull blade down. Keeping your elbow straight. Explore first your overhead range. Oh, it's different on this side. For me, it is. I like to sleep on this arm. So pull that shoulder down. Keep your elbow straight. Three, two. Pull it down and return it to your side. Passing through your side. Rotating your hand. So pinky forward, thumbs back. Blade resets, it goes up, back, and down. Thumb leads this time. Straight arm reaching behind you. Squaring up, sorry, squaring up forward. Three, two, pull that back to your side. Again, lengthening this as long as everything feels okay. Thumb goes back to forward. Blade resets, up, back, down. Straight arm to your overhead. We're doing our get-ups today, so we might have that overhead arm. Pause, check out. Square up, straighten your elbow. Once you can't go any further, start your rotation in its socket. Reaching around, rotating so that that pinky comes forward again, ends up at your side. Blade resets up, back, down. Thumb leads towards the back. Check it, elbow straight. Once it can't go any further, it rotates, keeping the shoulder down. Coming up overhead. Elbow, Warren, pull through concrete. Lats, 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 lats. Down. Super dupe. That was the hardest thing we've done yet today. Cause some sweat. Yeah. That gets that sweat going a little bit. Walk again. Continuing at those feet. Continuing at the feet. Could we only walk on heels for a couple and then only walk on toes? That's fine. When we walk on our heels, there'll be two versions. First, could we walk and what we could call this elephant walk, and we'll end up hiking a hip. Your leg might kick out to the side here. Knees are straight. The knees are straight. It doesn't have to kick out. It could be a super small movement that would help you locomote in that front direction. I love my hands on those hip holsters. Maybe you could put yours there too. And I, sorry, I realize I'm not on my, uh, I'm not on my heels the way I asked you to be. Oops, yeah, I was so on just my for, for a couple, that is harder. So as a regression, you could have your full feet on the floor. Now, go onto those heels and walk from your bum. So now we don't want your suspension system going up and down as much. Instead, you're walking from your hip flexor and your bum. So there's no up and down now. It's more just like that choo-choo train going back and forth. And do that just a couple more. So again, maybe you feel you have to stabilize on the leg and back uh, as that leg goes There's into the front. Relax that for a second. Let's do the same thing on the toes. So we'll get to the toes. And on the toes, I'm going to overdo it a little bit. Think of this kind of an action, always in control until we can be a little bit more loosey-goose, but pull a straight leg into the hip socket. Straight up for maybe three, two, and then one. And now we don't want so much of that up down in our suspension system here. <laughs> Brace this and work from the hips. Straight knees still. Straight knees, push, pull. Squeezing glutes. That sounds good. Even put your hands on them. And again, when you squeeze your glutes, you're squeezing with the glutes and your hands are just touching versus. Yeah, you're not squeezing your glutes you're not with your hands. Three, two, bring your feet together underneath you. Stay on your toes. Now, very slow descent. Five, 
four, <laughs> three, two, and down. Nice try, Ian. Nice try. Nice. All right, some, oh yes, yeah, some cat the cows cat cow. today. Whether we have that chair or we use our knees, you can do this on the floor as well. I'm gonna do it for my knees, you? I'm gonna tell them what we're doing. Okay. You go on your hands and knees. I would like you to watch first a full cat cow. Well, I won't go super slow, and then we're all gonna do it together. When we do this today, we're gonna to start from the bottom, work towards his head, and then come back to the bottom, work towards his head. So right now, Ian is in that kind of curved position there, or the cow. Starting at his tail, he's gonna start pulling the floor together and tucking under his tail. We're gonna go a little faster than I want you to. He's gonna tuck. I'm tip-tapping him into his low back, that's pushing up. I'm tip-tapping into his bra line, that's pushing up. No, he doesn't have a bra on. Now, he's gently tucking his chin, and pushing there. So now we're in that full rounded cow, uh, happy cat position. From here, starting back to the tail, only his tail is gonna tilt. No shifting back, tail tilt. Good, then into that low back. Now that T-spine, we're gonna drive our fists through there, thinking about lifting our heart towards the front, pulling our shoulders down. Okay, now you can join. From all fours or from your chair position, Let's start in that kind of swayed back position or what we call the cow. Thinking about me touching you at your tailbone here, I want you to start tucking your pelvis under using your core. That you were done with the pelvis, that whole pelvis is tucked. Great, now I'm touching you into your mid back and you're thinking about that mid back pushing up towards the ceiling. Chin staying tucked and we're working on our, I'm kind of touching you between your blades here. And now. they're retracted, they're yeah, so we're just pushing away from us. Think about your spine moving, not your shoulder blades. Now we're into that chin and that C spine. So he's going to tuck his chin and I'm tapping his neck and he's going to think about pushing his vertebrae into the hand here. Three, two, don't go anywhere. Relax for a second, don't go anywhere. I'm now back to your tail. So yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to push the floor away to create a little bit more tension here. So I'm pushing forward with my hands and back with my knees. We're at the tail. So my pelvis is now tilted to the ceiling. I'm poking you now into that mid back. I'm poking you now just into that bra or just above. And I'm trying to keep my chin down. And I'm pushing that T spine forward for three. Chin's tucked. Maybe it's lifted a bit, but neck isn't cranked. Two. And then slowly relax. <sighs> I take it back. That's the hardest thing that we've done yet today. Yeah, we just worked with the big For that there. upper back. One more quick exercise for those ankles in, in regards to the walk. Maybe oh. I could get up a little bit closer. Give me that chair for a second. Please. Please? Okay, so I'm gonna be a little bit off camera here. Lauren's gonna do the same thing up ahead. So on the floor, you could do this from a lunge even, or from standing. Get towards that position. With you had a pop can again underneath of that heel. Could you step on it without going anywhere? So it's that isometric that we did similar to last week. Can you feel that work in the back of the calf? So I'm trying to crush my and relax my that. Mouth. Relax that. Then could you go back up to that demi point, making sure we have a nice straight line all the way down the foot. And same thing. You're going to try to push on that cop. Excuse me. Push on the pop can but not really go anywhere. Five, four, three, and relax that. One more. Yep. Go back on that demi point, send that energy through the foot into the toes, and then without going anywhere, push down, push down, push down for four, three, two, relax that tension, return the foot to the floor, and put it down. Yeah, who's feeling it here? Yeah. Good, good. The calf, the hips. Make them be uh, friends, not enemies. Same thing. Elevate the leg, making sure we don't have that sickled foot, so making sure it's a nice straight ankle. From here, there's that pretend pop can underneath, and start to transition load or weight to it for nine, eight. So there's no movement. It's an isometric contraction. Three, two, ease off that tension. You might be able to go up one millimeter onto that demi point again. From here, 
Let's push down. 10, 9, 8, 7. Push it. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. Slow off. Yeah, that hip flexor front of hip on the other side. My goodness. Last one. Press down on that ball of foot. Why are we doing this? Because lunges use this foot. My heels wear this foot. Two. Oh, shoot. One. And relax and keep count here. Wiggle out those ankles. We'll take that. Quick hip Wiggle bars. out those ankles. We'll do a quick set of hip bars and then we'll move Excellent. on. Excellent. Grab your apparatus, stand in the middle of your room, whatever you'd like. Focus on your hip, not on your balance for this activity. Starting standing on my inside leg, pointing my foot to the front, drawing our nice low circle to start. Chalk on the bottom of your toe. Start your rotation open so that I see the inseam of your pants. Drawing that perfect semicircle around your body, pausing at that side, pushing your hips forward. As we come around the back, that inseam is going to close and we're going to rotate so the knee is now facing forward. Over your toes, keep your knees straight, pull that leg under your body. Repeat to the back, point to the back. Tuck your ribs, hips, keep your knees straight. That uh, femur is going to rotate in its socket as it comes out to that side position. Inseam forward, still tall in the cheek. Draw that circle to the front. The inseam should still be up here. Unrotate, pull underneath. One more time, a little bit higher. To the front, point, rotate open, lift, pull. Now to the side. Start drawing that circle, inseam forward. As you get to the back, hips push forward, femur rotates in in its socket. To the back, point, pull that leg underneath still. You should be able to keep that straight knee. Now to the back, point, knee straight, lift the foot off the floor if allowed. Start rotating in its socket around to the side. Open up. To the front, you should still be the same distance off the floor as when you started. Maybe up a bit more. Down, unrotate, pull. Great. We have two hips. Biking and gardening, that feels good after that. Lighten it up. What does it feel good after what you do? Point to the front. Rotate right away. Inseam up. Start drawing that circle to the side. Check in at the side there. Still tall in the inside leg. As I continue, femur rotates. It comes right behind me. Once it's behind me, over toes, pull underneath. Pointing to the back. Point. Rotate in its socket. Reach along, growing as you do this, trying to touch the side of your room. Opening up, seam forward. Pulling to the front, keep that seam, seam up towards me. Keep that seam forward. Then unrotate, then pull it under. One more time, up off the floor. Point, rotate, lift, then serve that around to the side. Unrotate as you reach behind you. I guess unrotate is really kind of counter. Rerotate. <laughs> Pull that leg back underneath you. Cool. Straight to the back again. To the back point. Knee stays straight. It lifts a bit. It reaches long. It rotates as it comes around. Hips are staying level. Bringing it to the front. Inseam up. Lift. Point. Unrotate. Pull. Like it's easy, but we all know it's not. All right. Just watch for that second. Here is that windmill exercise again that we would like to get into. We'll explore our folds and our windmills in short order. This would be a windmill. I could take a load here. I press, quarter turn, and I work on my hinge. That hinge. So everything that we'll do from here on out is to help us with the hinge and the window. Uh, Lauren, it'll be that wall. So I'm going to say 
against the wall. If you have a wall or that chair handy, use it a little bit. Lauren is a brick wall. We, knew we that. all know that. I don't want to touch that brick wall. I will start doing my forward fold at my chin. Proceed to pull that rib cage down onto my hips. I had to be a taller wall. And flex my spine and rib cage forward and down without touching the wall. And then gently come back up to tall. Repeat that one or two more, very slow. So again, with our back against the wall or standing free form, barely touch that wall with my bum. Up to bottom on this flexion or folding action. The low back should stay mostly straight. Pull from your center like that cat cow and extend through the spine. Lifting back up. Lifting back up, giving yourself that lift. One more go. Chin tuck, ribs being pulled down. Can you activate your core here? Feel that nice tension. Knees are straight. And then pulling up from center to stack. So again, you want to do that exercise because it's important and you will fold, but also to distinguish between a hinge and a fold. All right, warming up our stair climbing muscles. Important for going downstairs here always underrated. Standing on our single leg, we're gonna explore 10 and two o'clock on the clock face here. Standing on my single leg, I lied. Let's stand on two legs first and just push our knees over our toes. Warm up those Achilles and calves for a second as we do this and then stand back up. All I'm doing is pushing my knees over my toes, keeping my heels down. This is gonna be the motion we explore next. Pick a single leg. I'm gonna take my leg, I'm going to do the same motion, but on a single thank you, but on a single leg, and I'm going to touch 10 o'clock on the clock because that's my leg there. So I'm going to push my knee forward over my toe and touch 10 o'clock on the clock. It depends which leg. You might be touching two o'clock. Stand up tall, pull that leg underneath you. Let's do 10 o'clock again or two o'clock, same leg. Knee goes forward, other leg taps towards that 10 o'clock. Checking in, pull yourself back up, squeeze your glute. As you go this time, Check in that your hips are still level as you do this. Okay. Pull that back up to center. Pull that leg underneath, switch legs. Knee pushes over toe, other leg slides out towards that 10 or two time on the clock. Pulls it back into center, tall. Going down a stair, my knee is coming over my toe. I'm tapping out. I'm pulling myself back up. One last time. Knee slides forward, tapping my two o'clock, pulling myself back to center. Great. We'll mm. go four and eight next time. We're going to fold for one last time today. Pulling down, pulling up, creating tension. Two repetitions. Do your fold. Keep your knees straight. We're going to breathe. All the way down, just the same. Just the same. All the way down. You could go all the way down. But no, uh, no rush. Nice and tall. Start with your chin tuck. Chin tuck. Chin tuck. Maintain your breath. Pull the rib cage through the abdominals to connect to the. Continue to breathe. If you touch the wall, that's fine. But don't. From your flexed position. Pull from your belly button, the strength and awareness from the breath, and then that extension through the cat cow. Lauren's into one more time here. Let's just watch sure, her. Go far That's good. Did. No, far doesn't matter. Take your time. Knees are straight. Her feet, her knees, her hips are in a beautiful straight line. And then she's slowly flexing forward from there and pulling back up. Lauren, explore that movement clock next. Moving out towards fours and eights. 
Getting back onto your single leg. Same movement, knee pushes over toe, this time touching four or eight o'clock. Stand on your single leg. Knee slides forward, other leg taps back towards, I'm at eight o'clock here. And then all the way, tall, 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 squeeze, glute. Knee slides forward, tapping back towards eight. Heel of the standing leg always stays on the floor. And all the way up. So your limiting factor in this activity, and that's why we're working on it, is the mobility in your ankle. The mobility to decrease this angle right here, in case, good, you had your protractor up. Switch legs, okay, other side. Knee pushes forward, and just check in with yourself. Do I have one ankle? Do I have more dorsiflexion in one ankle than the other? Oh yeah, I've sprained this while I played Junior varsity basketball. I didn't play junior varsity basketball. Me neither. But I do know that I do know that this left leg is a little more challenging for me. Last one. Require a little more attention. Basketball career. And then all the way up. A little more patience. Tall. Excellent. Cool. It's time for the get up. We're gonna do two get ups per side. To this point at this practice, we haven't really used an implement. Lauren might grab a club, and I'm gonna grab a shoe. Oh good, I wanted my dumbbell. And different ways that we can make the get up heavier, or excuse me, more challenging without the addition of the load include balancing an object on a closed fist, or helping coach that nice wrist position we wanna go through if we do in fact start to use a load. If you're holding onto that, or a shoe, or barehanded, make a fist, pinkies over wrist, wrist over elbow, and eventually elbow in line with that shoulder. Two repetitions, let's listen to Lauren as we go. Oh, great. I'm gonna take mine overhead, so I'm gonna press. <gasps> Again, if you don't have that shoulder mobility, cross your arm across your body. Leg you can touch, steps back. Front foot opens. All right, here's our windmill, let's focus. Chopping, taking your loose hand, pushing your hip back and rotating underneath that load. Hand finds floor. We should do that twice. Hand leaves floor, come back up. Chop hip, rotate underneath. Rotate, pushing push that hip back. back. Whoa. Jinx. Hand finds floor, sweeps through. Elbow, slow raise to your back. Five, four, three, two, one. Reverse it. Use your foot, push, roll, pull. Hip extension. Find your hand, lift, sweep. Think about your windmill. Hand is going to leave the floor, so my hips shift back, and I unrotate underneath. Front foot moves, both legs hop. If you can, let's keep that arm overhead. Step back, lunge. Front foot opens. All right, windmill. Chop, hinge, rotate, hand finds floor, lift, sweep, elbow, to my back. I won. Oh, I mean, it's not a race. race. I mean, it's not a race. Push, pull, elbow, find your hand, pack your shoulder, lift, sweep, on windmill, hand meets floor, Hip hinge, rotate. Front foot, up together. Now pull your bell down. Four, lats. Three, two, one. Whew. Whew. I don't recommend throwing weights to the other hand. Ooh. Ready? Hup, hup. Brings in the weight on this one, maybe. Press all your bling. Overhead. Step back, lunge. Front foot opens. Chop, rotate, hand finds floor. We did this twice on the other side the first time through. Hand leaves floor, back one more time. Chop, rotate, hinge. Nice, the rotation and hinge. Sweep, elbow, back. Come back up, use that foot, push, pull, elbow, hand. 
Lift, sweep. Hand leaves floor. Hips drive through. Come under your bell. Front foot. Jump. Up. Last get up of the day. Whoa. Step back, lunge. The Pay balance. Attention. The Front balance. Foot. Open. Ready? Windmill. Chalk. Rotate. Hand finds floor. Sweeps. Elbow. Push away from elbow. Three, two, one. Last up. Use your hip extension to your hand, to your lift. Sweep. Hand leaves. Front foot moves. Sorry, I forgot to come up together. Ready? Pull down. Five, four, three, two, one. Excellent. So find those ways to make those get ups more challenging, more simple. More simple, you can do them from here. Step back, open up, hinge, get to the floor. It's a fun, strong move to do as well. The folds where we flex through that spine and the hips stay stacked are different than our hinge where our hips start in that stacked position and end up behind us. For this exercise, you could grab the bumper of your car, something heavy down low. You could also look to pick this up with time, but before you pick it up, you want to talk about a preload, making work without lifting weights. Lauren will stand over top of her bell. She'll go through five repetitions of the hinge. I'm going to go back to the wall, use your chair or wall, and hinge. Shall I talk? Okay. We are going to take our rod and we're going to place it down our spinal cord. It's going to go through our head, down our spine, and into our tailbone. Down. I don't know where. There's one right there. Okay, your rod is through your spine. Do not bend your rod, it doesn't bend. Take your hands, chop your hips, push your hips back. Reach back, pause at the bottom here. Pause. Check in with yourself. Check number one, my toes are gripping. Check number two, my chins are vertical. Check three, my hands are stuck in my hips. Check four, my rod has not bent. I have a long spine from my head to my tail. I feel work in my hamstrings and my glutes and I'm gonna drive those through to stand up. Squeeze butts, brace abs. Let's mm -hmm. do that a little bit faster. Not so fast, a little bit faster. Chalk hips, shins vertical. This is such a great warm up before you go out and garden. I spent some time gardening and this is what was sore the next day. Reaching long, Those hands. bracing abs, up as one unit. Squeeze glutes, abs. What's your cue to squeeze your glutes, Lauren? Mint a yeah. coin in your Mint a coin, feel that energy to actually extend those hips. Chop. Good. I also think about pulling or pushing the floor. Yeah, create tension. Grip the floor, reaching long. Feel low through hamstrings and glutes, brace abs, up, last one. Hip hinge, rod in my spine, it's still there. I'm reaching long. I'm gonna fake grab my bell just because I have one. I'm gonna pack my shoulders. Think about loading up my glutes, like I'm gonna lift my soil off the ground and then up, boom. Cool. Like weeds I'm lifting off the ground. So really quick, let's just quickly talk about that preload. If you're gonna go lift that heavy rock on the garden, try to move your car, lift your partner, lift the kettlebell, the preload. This is an example of the preload, ready? Lauren, oh, no pick me up, pick me up. Don't pick me up though. Huh. But I could. Before she went to pick me up, she wore the load on her body. Do that again, the preload. Huh. Oh, and then she lifted me up. If we want to do incredible feats of strength or just safely lift in the garden, lift it, load your body without moving it first, and then go for it. I see stars. Holding high plank positions here and returning to our hinge in a second. Okay. You Setting up, go ahead, sorry, really. You do it. I was just going to recover from that. <laughs> <laughs> Setting up your hinge, using that hinge with the vertical shins. You might have to modify a little bit and then walk out to that plank's position. Plank or push? High plank position. High plank position. The Squeeze your bum. Back. 
brace the core and wait for Lauren's cues for 10 seconds of work. So I've started the time now. The rod is still in your spine. Your head, butt, shoulders are all in one line. You still have three more seconds. Don't let me push you over. Two, squeeze the mint of the coin. Two, one. How are we going to get back up? Oops. These are going to come down. Take a moment. Take a moment. Do that again. Let's do that again. He wants to do it again. Let's do that one more time. Ready? Yeah. Knees up, rod and spine, pull the four together, squeeze glutes, brace abs, take a punch, breathe. Five more seconds of high tension. Five, four, three, two, one. Easy. Gentle knees. Take a second, up anyhow you want, but be deliberate. It's either a lunge from this position, a fold, or the hinge. I'm going to do the fold. I'm going to watch. So remember, the fold is different than the hinge. So noticing in the fold, Ian's spine is rounded. If you're hinging, your spine should be broad. Back Extended. to our hinges. Back to that hinge. Extended. Last set of the hinges. Preload the object, that heavy car bumper, 1,000 pounds thrown in the garden. Get work before you move it for safety and strength. The other analogy I like that Ian uses when he says preload is if, I've never done it, but if you had to get something out of the ditch with your big giant truck, and you attach your line to that truck, you want no slack in that line before you tow out. So think about no slack in your line before you lift. Tension is our friend. Chop hips, shins vertical, grip bell, pack shoulders, brace ads, no slack in your line, up without. <laughs> Chop hips, uh, sorry. Nice rod-like spine, toes are gripped, shins vertical, brace abs, up, two more. So Chop. pushing out on the floor again helps generate that torque, Grip. tension we need. Back. Up. Be nice and strong. We should do one more. Chop, hinge, pack, feel glutes, feel hammies. Grab. Yes. Nice. Repeat our high planks position. One more round of two repetitions. All right. Cool. Go ahead. How should I get down? I think you should uh, hinge. Hinge. How is it going to do my hinge? You're already down. You are I'm setting there. up my hinge. I'm going to have to tip forward, tip, tip. walk up to my high plank. All right. Get set up. Three, two, increase tension. Pull the floor. Squeeze the glutes. Create tension in your legs, too. Pull your quads tight. Three, three, two, easy off, knees come down. Okay, five seconds off. We'll do that one more time. Another 10. Gripping floor, elbows. Three, two, Listening up. a little Go. Shoulders down, elbows straight, hands gripping, tension, lats, abs, butts, quads, calves. Three, two, I really like tapping and hitting Ooh. people when they're in their plank. It gives good feedback. So. And then this would be distinction. That's my. my yeah. Starts talking about. It's tall. Let's do one set of our single legs and one more plank to finish up. Excellent. Okay. Single legs in the corners again. Oh, oh single, single leg hinges. Legs. Oh, single leg hinges. You mean? Single leg hinges. For the single leg hinges, I grab on to. My exercise clubs here as a little bit of our balancing. Lauren's gonna grab that. Big bell to balance. Now what's interesting your time kick, make yeah, it work. What's interesting is we go to teach people a single leg hinge and they get all confused. But they just learned a two-legged hinge. So let's just look at this. Two-legged hinge is the same as a single leg. All I did was transfer my weight out, and now I'm just in a single leg hinge and I stand up. Nothing changes. You just have one leg. So if you'd like to you have two that, legs, you have one two legs. leg on Let's the practice floor. that. Two feet to start. Chop in your usual hinge. Transfer weight, so you're in the bottom of your hinge. Transfer weight to one of your legs. Reach the leg that has no weight behind you. Stand up, drag that leg on the floor. Stand up, squeeze that glute. I think that was great. That was fantastic. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other leg now. I'm gonna chop, start with my hinge first with two legs. I'm going to transfer my weight to my other leg. My leg that's empty is going to reach behind me, squared up to the floor, 
and I'm gonna stand up by driving those hip through. If you would like to do those, keep doing those. If you'd like to switch into just two single legs, let's do that. Standing on our single leg, right away, hinging. You can revisit the previous drill if you don't have it. So I'm looking, doing that. I'm doing the kickstand version of this drill here. Meaning his foot's on the floor. And I extend my hip through just like Lauren. I'll repeat one more on that leg again, doing that kickstand version, tapping along the floor, boop, bracing, balancing, more, like and extending. And again, that rod is still in your spine. Nothing is bending here other than your knee. Switch. Mm -hmm. Great. Chop hips. So I set up on my two feet first. I adopted my kickstand and I hip extended through. Then I went right into my kickstand, similar to Lauren, except I'm gonna use the floor a little bit more. Hold your balance, is your shin vertical, drive to tall. And repeat. Grip the floor with the toes, pack your shoulders, talk to your bum cheeks, okay. And then our last set of presses or push-ups here today, or that high plank. Put these off to the side. Put this bell off to the side. And I think it's Lauren's turn oh, to do a push-up, don't you? Never right. plank. High plank, high plank. plank. So hin hin yep, hinging to the floor, walking out to that high plank's position, tucking to toes, to opening prepare. hands. Three, two, create tension. Now! The bums are squeezing. And we're also thinking about this rotation. There's an excellent Lauren. There's no way we could twist you. Three, two, casual, soft, controlled knees. The little reset, the regrip. Promise this is the last repetition for today. Excuse me. She passed the hiccups along here. So we have our bum squeeze, our core tension. 10, nine, Eight, the kneecap pulling up like Lauren mentioned before, tension through the whole body for two. Ease off that tension. Oh. If you're on the floor, maybe just stay there or take your time coming right back up to tall. Whew. Love some work, Ian. Yeah, I think so. Hope you feel your hammies. So that is today's restore and recharge practice. Working on the same things from last week and progressing into that windmill movement. And as Lauren broke down in that getup, the getup has that windmill component too, and uh, it we'll just helps here. everything else. Yeah. So as you're doing things around your house today, think about how many times you hinge and how often you use it. You should be doing it twice a day when you brush your teeth in the morning and night, spitting into your sink, hinging. Using the hinge. Right. So just be aware of that. Yep. And let us know when you do it. Hopefully they do show up in real life and help you out in the garden or elsewhere. If today is Wednesday, that means that tonight we have, am I gonna get the name of it right? We have Mobility Club. Mobility Club on a Wednesday night. We use those exercise clubs for shoulder health, for coordination, for a little bit of brain gym exercises. Just talk about it oh, rather than typing. Sorry. It's just better than it's being close. Um, so the brain gym exercises for tonight, at, uh, the clubs workout, and then tomorrow is Lauren's killer kettlebell class. Mm -hmm. So approach that with for the shin splint question, that just a, a quick, when I suffered from shin splints, I would take an ice cube. So my shin splints tended to be on the inside of my shin. Um, I would take an ice cube or a frozen Dixie cup of water, and then I would just rub like a light massage up and down of that area with my ice cube. That could be helpful for you. Mm -hmm. You just want to get that inflammation down a little bit. And then just take it easy on it. And strengthen everything above and below, right? Strengthen your knees and your glutes and your feet. That'll help. If it's on the front, look to the back. So when we did that little calf raise, we were like this with that little calf raise. That or similar exercises to that could help uh, alleviate some of that uh, tension on the front of the body. Help share that around. Um, yeah. So again, the Wednesday night classes, the Thursday classes. And this weekend is Mother's Day, and on Mother's Day mm. at 10 a.m., Sunday the 10th at 10 a.m., we will be hosting a Little Lifter workshop. We've had five episodes online. None of them have been live to this point. And on Mother's Day, either as a fun event for family or 
mom can go for a walk and kids can stay at home uh, and work out with us on Little Lift. So share that with anyone who might be interested to join us. That's 10 a.m. on Sunday for a Little Lift. Until then, there's lots of likes. There's lots of action here. Thank you so much for your participation today. We look forward to training simple, staying strong, and seeing you soon in class. Have a good day. Thanks for coming. Be great. See you tomorrow.